Hi, everyone. Welcome back to X Level Inc.'s exclusive Happy Empowerment Hour. I am so excited today to introduce you to a very dear friend who we were saying earlier before the show started, we're the type of friends we might not have to talk every day, but as soon as we get that call, we're like, how are we going to support each other? My friend, Dr. Patricia Ruiz Healy, and I'm going to read this to you because she deserves every <laughs> accolade. She has an interdisciplinary PhD in Latin American studies from UT Austin, a master's of arts in art history from UTSA. She's the author of the book, Matias Goritz, the subject of their PhD dissertation and of several exhibition catalog essays. And I have to tell you, she's curated over a hundred exhibits. And as a friend, I can attest to her passion of really making sure art is appreciated but not only that, on educating the novice collector, which was a little bit about how we met. And I have to say, I've bought several pieces <laughs> from my very dear friend. And I love your approach to art. So, Patricia, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I'm so honored that you invited me, Citlali. And when I got the call from you, and like you just mentioned it, that, you know, we don't see each other every day, but we are like, you know, all soulmates and we just take it where we left it. And um, so anyway, I'm very excited, very honored to be here and talking to you. Well, and I will tell you, Patricia, you're right. We have, we're like old soulmates of friends that I, I swear Patricia is one of the most elegant women when I was always at the galas and I'd be like, Ooh, you also pull your hair back. Who are you? And I think <laughs> the time we really met was over talking about dresses and our sweet friend Jolie. But I have to tell you your dedication to Latin American art is something that I I know is a dear passion that we both have. And I'm curious, what ignited that passion for you? Well, it was my love of art history and uh, that I, you know, discovered when I actually was living in London as a, I was 17 when I got a scholarship, I went to London to study English. Um, and that's when I discovered art and I fell in love with the, with the field. And uh, then I married very young, whatnot, uh, everything good. Right. And then I, I, I finally went, went back to school when my youngest daughter was and started the uh, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. and, and because I always felt like I, I was, you know, when I was growing up, I always felt, oh, no, I'm going to be, uh, I always thought I was going to be like an ambassador. I was, right. that was my kind of ideal. I remember growing up, but I always saw myself like, I'm gonna have a college degree. That was my deal. And I'm gonna be uh, an empresaria, you know, an entrepreneur, and then I'm gonna marry and have kids. But the right person came along and and we got married and mm -hmm. we have had a wonderful marriage of 37 years now and counting. Wow. Um, but uh, so anyway, to, to get back to my, I, that was always on behind my, my, my brain that, you know, I didn't finish college. It was felt like, always felt like, it was, I was not completed. Mm -hmm. um, and thank goodness I had the opportunity to, to go back to school, finish college, and then I just kept going. I, I told Juan, my husband, said, you know, I really like this and I, I want to, you know, I want to learn more. I want to be more uh, educated. And that's when I did my master's. And then, then he said, well, why don't you do the PhD? I mean, you, you're doing so well and, and this and that. And, and I decided to concentrate on Latin America because that was, you know, I'm from Mexico originally. Yeah. And that was kind of the material that I, I knew, I was familiar with, and I thought it was uh, still underrepresented. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, after all these years, uh, Latin America is, uh, our history in uh, Latin American art, artists are very well represented in all over the place. In mm -hmm. most museums have a curator of Latin American art. So my new, my new banner, my new goal is to, to bring to the attention of the public and to bring to the attention of institutions the work of what is called now Latinx artists. Mm -hmm. Because Latinx artists are basically artists that had, but uh, they're American, uh, American artists, consider American artists because they're either were born in the States or they're living in the States. So they have the mm -hmm. American experience. They only kind of share the situation that they have a Latin American background. And, and unfortunately, uh they're not you know is it, it, latin it, latin american or latinos or you know we have all these different names that is right. another conversation 
uh, but uh, artists, I mean, uh, demographically speaking, uh, we represent, and I say we because I became an American citizen recently and I'm very proud yes. of the fact. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's, we represent 18% of the population in this mm -hmm. country. And we don't have that 18%, not even, not even a 10% of the 18% in museums. Mm. Uh, because they usually go for Latin American artists. Nothing wrong with that. I love my Latin American artists, but I feel like my job will be better served if I, you know, champion more Latinx artists. And Latinx is somebody like Chuck, for right. example. Chuck didn't even speak Spanish. Right. Like he loved Mexican culture. He loved Mexico. He loved everything about Mexico and Latin America that you've seen. His grandmother, uh, you know, spoke to him highly about Mexico and taught him how to cook. And, you know, you know, you knew Chuck very well. And uh, we have very that in common. Um, and that's, uh, that's somebody, you know, that I, I'm very proud to represent the state. And then and, I have and let me interrupt you, if you don't mind, because you're very humble right now in the way that you're describing Chuck. So our dear friend, Chuck Ramirez, who actually, we served together as co-chairs for Art Paces Quinceañera, which I know we're going to talk about Art Pace in a little bit. But I have to tell you, some of my fondest memories, he really introduced me to San Antonio. There's a friend that introduced me to San Antonio. It was Chuck. And being a co-chair of decor with him for that Quinceañera was such a learning experience for myself. He was a prolific artist who unfortunately passed away at a very young age through a bike accident. But what you have done with his estate friend and what you've done with his artwork that I'm happy to say that one of my art pieces is, you know, that oh, I, 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 I see photo. two, I see two there. Right. I see yeah, the broom and, 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 um, and the fashionista. And the fashionista, you know, it was a perfect art piece for me to buy from you. Um, what you have done I, from the Smithsonian to the McNay exhibit, to oh, the McNay, the McNay, yes. I'm going, wow, what, what you said is your passion. I can attest to you living every day. And I get chills right now. Chuck is so happy oh. right now for both of us. And <laughs> they're together and they're talking about me in a good way. But tell me, how did you and Chuck meet? I'm just curious. You know, we met, we actually met, I want to say probably like five years before he died. I knew about his work. Uh, when I was doing my master's, uh, I curated a show uh, with um, Elisa Garcia. Mm -hmm. And one of the artists of the MFA, his inspiration was Chuck Ramirez. And that's mm -hmm. how the first time, and that was 2000, I want to say like 2004. Okay. Um, then I met Chuck socially because, of course, you know, right. all the, in the, he was oh, a big uh, social person going everywhere. And then, and I did, but I, I studied his work first, right? And then we met right. socially. And then he invited me to do a studio visit. Uh, and I don't, you know, I'm never going to forget that experience because um, uh, I was, you know, it, it, you know, when, when I when I was finishing my my master's, that's when I started the business with Healy Art. Right. Uh, so I was kind of taking baby steps very, to kind of grow it very organically uh, because I also, you know, I had my kids and my husband and my home and whatnot. So I wanted to just do it right. Um, mm -hmm. So I went to his, uh, I went to his, to his home, the, the on the located on the, on the famous compound um, mm -hmm. in in, in South Town, uh, San Antonio, and and uh, he was so charming. He had a, a beautiful Mexican tray, I remember, and he had topo chico, mm -hmm. and then he had a uh, hummus, and and I'm talking. This is probably 2007, mm -hmm. um, oh, 2006, 2007. And, and then we just sat down and start talking and, you know, it was kind of love at first sight for an artist and a dealer, mm -hmm. a lot of nice communication, dialogue, and, and we started working. And then, um, unfortunately, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in 2010, that's when he passed away yeah. and, and the, the family asked me to, to represent the state. And that has been for me as an, as an art dealer, as a gallerist, as a gallery owner, has, it's been my, my biggest honor. Really, I have I have learned so much. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to Chuck. I mean, because it's somebody that keeps giving me. You know, he's mm -hmm. not here, but he's here. Yes. I mean, every day I learn something from his work, and and on Tuesday we had this incredible conversation um, uh, organized by the Dallas Art Fair. Yes. People, uh, culture place call, and uh, 
it was just wonderful to exchange ideas and exchange uh, stories about Chuck and his work. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, it's, he's gonna be, you know, the Blanton Jazz Museum just acquired a big work uh, uh, of his, uh, of his, uh, one, the, uh, the, the way it's called the What a Cap series. Um, it's, a, it's a photograph of a Whataburger soda can, the large uh -huh. one. Uh, but you know, it's, it measures seventy-two inches by forty-eight, so it's a big, wow. it's a big work. Um, so it's, uh, so I was very proud of that because that was only you know two thousand nineteen. So I, I just feel like every time a curator just kind of uh, connects to his work, I just feel like oh, I'm doing something right. So, <laughs> but going back to the conversation, what we're talking about, Chuck, and what you've accomplished with them, think of. Any, at least as far as I know, and again, you have a doctorate in it. I'm just an art enthusiast and a lover of art um, around it and have been collecting for a very long time. But I have to tell you, anyone that collects art knows that an artist is always wanting to build a legacy to be remembered. The reason they do something is to inspire a thought. And I remember with Chuck, and if you don't mind maybe speaking to one of the pieces, maybe that I have behind me, that would be fantastic so people can maybe understand him. But I'll never forget that when I was doing the quinceañera um, for Art Pace with him, and I was asking him about his art, he told me about the fly swatter at the Rancho que andaba en México. It was a turquoise fly swatter. I looked like a butterfly. And he said, he goes, and I was swatting this butterfly, this fly swatter. It was so pretty because it looked like a butterfly. So I was like, I'm going to swat you. You're a mosquito. You're a fly. You know, you know, Chuck. He's like, and I was just doing this. He goes, and then, because at that time he was doing a lot of the food photography for HEB and those things. That's when he was doing more of his graphic work before. And then he said, he goes, and then I do this and it broke. You know, at the dinner, I've been swatting people all day long. So by the time dinner and probably knowing Chuck, a couple of drinks later, it broke. Uh -huh. And he was like, oh, my little fly swatter. He said it was a beautiful, like a turquoise, blue, almost like the, the, the color of the broom. That's why the broom is so special to me. And he said, um, not just that reason, but many. Sure. But I will tell you, and he goes, and it broke. And there was a gentleman working on the ranch. And so he's like, it's probably came from the dollar store. No, no big deal. But they saw his pain in doing it. So the next morning when he got up outside of his bedroom door was a fly swatter, the butterfly one, that they used metal to put the wings together so it could fly. And so his fly swatter was back to him. And he uh. said, goes, and that's when I fell in love with the resourcefulness of Mexico. That man taught me what I would have just thrown away was now a treasure. He goes, and then I started looking at the bags. Then I started looking at the brooms. I started looking at all these things and going, oh my gosh, in Mexico, guardan todo. Like they use it till the nub of I it. Know, no. and, you know, in Mexico, we, 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 we have been recycling for a long time, <laughs> right? I mean, for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that's, you know, one of his serious, uh, the, you know, the brooms, like the yeah. one that you have behind, it was used in a construction site for the house of a good friend of him uh, uh, in Carelles, in the Pacific Coast in Mexico. Yeah. And that's also the, the Carelles series that is basically um, uh, these uh, like seven up cups, like soda, you know, the, those yeah. plastic cups in uh, Grandes, uh, where he saw that in Mexico, the construction workers were mixing paint or mixing cement, mixing materials. And he just loved the idea of, you know, these are beautiful objects. And mm -hmm. he brought them all the way to San Antonio with him and photographed them. And they mm -hmm. and the way he photographed the works, the objects, they look like Venetian glass. They look mm -hmm. like super old Venetian glass. Uh, but it was all about, in a way, he was honoring labor. He was mm -hmm. honoring these construction workers. He was very, very large, very big about doing those kind of things. And then in a way also about this idea of recycling, because uh, he criticized that, you know, the, the way that the U.S. and so many countries, right, is we consume, we just consume too much and we just throw it away without thinking about it. And, mm -hmm. and he was about, you know, recycling, that that was important for him or for the everyday objects to bring dignity to, that's why he, he the way he photographed the works is all this white blank uh, background and only the object in the front and just uh, you just the viewer viewing those works those objects it takes them to someplace else and that's mm -hmm. the that's the power of his work no definitely. really 
And I yes. also think that that's why it's so prolific, but it's also beautiful what you've done. Is that, so how did you deal with the Smithsonian? I just have to ask that question because I think that's everyone's dream, even though the well, museums are great as well, of course. I'm just well, kidding. you know, it's, it's one of those things that it takes a village, yes. and it, it was it was uh, it was meant to be. Also, uh, the Smithsonian was organizing a show back in 2012 uh, to uh, call um, Latinos in America. Yeah. And so the, the curator of the Smithsonian, Carmen E. Ramos, is actually the first curator for Latino and what is now called Latinx artists, um, uh, the first one in the nation uh, mm -hmm. ever. And she organized that show and somebody recommended for her to look at Chuck's work. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got together. And she said, I want to have breakfast tacos for the, for the Smithsonian collection and to be included in the show. Um, and, and they wanted me to give the work. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to, for the state to just give it to the Smithsonian because the Smithsonian is a, is a, is a public institution. And I said, yes, you know, I'm willing, I'm, I, you know, I can, you know, we'll give you a very amazing institutional discount. I just don't want the label to say gift of the artist. Right. Because when it's a gift of the artist, it's nice, but you know, when I'm trying to to bring credibility and dignity to to my to my artist, and mm. and a gift of the artist just takes away. Right. Uh, a, a person that knows about the art world, they all read the labels. Right. And so it's important that it was acquired by the fans or whoever. I don't care. Right. But no gift of the artist. Right. And and she understood it. And we, you know, uh, I took took a few months, and and it was done. So it was it was really amazing. That's I'm wonderful. very proud of that. Yeah. Well, and on that note of being amazing and wonderful, the things that you've done, you know, you and I have partnered on with several philanthropic events. But I have to also say that you know, when two thousand eight happened and there was a recession. Here in San Antonio, I was with Neiman Marcus. There was a program called Fashions Night Out. And I remember calling you out of the blue and saying, Amiga, I have an idea. I need to bring people back in. And we're going to expect like 2,000 people. I'm going to build this fashion show. And we do this. Yes. And we brought in Carlos Betancourt. I'll never forget our sweet Carlos. And we worked on this great thing that we actually sold his art piece. Remember the lady shoe yes. sold on? <laughs> customer actually, our decor, they want to buy this beautiful piece of art. We won't say the value, but it was, it was a substantial piece. And then we created these limited edition scarves that were just beautiful. I mean, oh my gosh! Adventures. I wish I wish I had some 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 of those scarves left. I mean, those those were beautiful. They are beautiful, and I will tell you this: mine is being framed right now because I decided I was going to frame it and put it in my office. And I, I called the framer. I said, "Is it done yet?" Because as we know, good framers they take a little while. And and they're like, "No, it's not done yet." I'm like, Darn it. I'm like "That's okay. I'll show up at the museum. My proud, you know, frame a little bit later." But I have to tell you, um, not all art gallerists would take risks like that. And I love mm -hmm. that you're open to that. And I think that that's also what your artists trust about you is, you know, it's going to be done in a tasteful manner. And, yes. But sometimes it's unconventional manner in order to get them the recognition that they need. So somebody, to your point, is purchasing their art because mm -hmm. it's so important that they be valued so they can grow so much. And well, Yes. So, so sorry to interrupt. No, no. I, I also, you know, it was the 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 ask was coming from you, who, okay. who I admire, and you always do everything elegantly done, sophisticated. I have to thank you for all your years of of uh, philanthropic work uh, with Arpace. I mean, for years. I mean, you had been always on the host committee. Host right. committee. I need to call you. Maybe I need to make you like a host committee emeritus or something. <laughs> you know, you all you have to do is call, and I'm gonna always say yes because I love Art Pace and what you all have done. But I would love for you to explain to everybody about Art Pace. I'm not gonna take the. You were the chairwoman of the board, and you've really helped the organization reinvent reinvent itself through COVID. There's so many different things. So I'm just, tell us a little bit about the institution and what plans you have for it. Well, uh, first of all, let me tr let me tell the, let me tell you a little bit about our base uh, for yeah. the general audience, right? Uh, so our base is an artist in residency founded back in 1995 by Linda Pace, 
and that's why it's called Art Base. And the uniqueness of the residency program is that a curator, a very well-known, very respected curator um, from internationally or nationally or original, selects an artist from Texas, an artist from the USA, and an international artist. Uh, so Chuck, for example, was selected back in 2002. Um, and of course, you know, it helped him, helped him tremendously on his career. Uh, that recognition, because, you know, he was selected by the Palais de Tokyo the, from Paris, uh, selected, selected him to be in, included. Uh, so they, they, they also know the uniqueness of art base is one of the, it's kind of the benchmark for artists and residency in mm -hmm. the world. It still is. I mean, when Linda found it, it was one of the few in the world. Now there are, now there are several, but it's still art base is a benchmark. Um, and it's really more well known outside San Antonio than in, right. in San Antonio, because international, especially for contemporary art, it has a lot of prestige, uh, great influence and, and whatnot. Um, so that we have a great staff. I mean, we have uh, Riley Robinson, who's the director that Riley. for years he was the studio director. So he knows all the artists. He actually opened our pace with Linda. Yeah. Uh, it was only Linda and Riley. Uh, so I'm so thankful to Riley who accepted to be first an interim director and then uh, he became our director and um, we have a great, great, now I feel like all the stars are aligned. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a wonderful board. It's a working board. Uh, they all give all their talent and time to, to make our pace better. In, in, uh, in January, we're going to be announcing something, something some exciting news. Um, they, uh, you know, this year, 2020 was a, uh, the 25th anniversary. Yeah. Um, I mean, is we couldn't do our amazing happening. We couldn't do our biggest fundraiser of the year because of COVID. So we're going to do it next year. We're going to do it when we're able to congregate. Yes. Um, but we are very happy that uh, we're going to finally have a publication that we haven't done a publication in about 10 years. And, and, and that's something that we promise the artists uh, when they come to the residencies that we will publish an important book uh, with essays from critics and writers. So that's coming up also in the fall, late in the fall, you know, December probably. So it's all very good plans. Well then, so we're gonna mark our calendar because we'll probably have to have you back in January so you can tell everyone what you're announcing. Okay, but, uh, okay. Are I you sure you don't want to hint at something just a little bit? No, I'd rather wait. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> so, I'd rather get you there. <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, I have to tell you something. It is contemporary art, which is great, right? That means we make our own rules in contemporary art. That's what I love about contemporary art as well. There are rules, but you kind of make them and, and mold them in, in your own. And with that being stated, then there's no difference to celebrate 25 when you're 26, you know, because you're contemporary. So that's I think it kind of goes with it. Linda's probably up there going, yes, everyone, this is how I really wanted to celebrate 25 year anniversary when we're 26. Well, that's, that's what we're going to be doing, because I mean, I, we, I feel like we were robbed. So we're not going to feel that way. We're just going to celebrate it next year. We're, you know what? It's always divine timing. So now we have yes. more time to work on our outfits because for those that are out there, I will put out there when that gala is going to happen because it will happen. I will tell you this. It's one of my favorite best dress events because you have such a curation of artists, everything like that. I remember my first gala, I went to it here in San Antonio. I walked in and this fabulous woman was wearing this white Yves Saint Laurent um, tuxedo jacket with just like sheer leggings with little crystals on it and these Louboutin shoes. And I was like, I love her. We are going to be friends. I, I'm going to live here. I can definitely do this. And it was based off the fabulous attire. Because again, when you're with artists, it's a self-expression, which is what fashion and art always go hand in hand. It's the expression of yourself. And that's what I think a lot of people, I, as I encourage them, is if you can't come to San Antonio right now with everything going on virtually, get involved in art pace. Go see what they can do because there's so many things you could do with them virtually. And they do such a great job. Oh, yes. You and, and actually, you know, our base is open by appointment, so okay. you can visit. We have great shows right now. We have the uh, the Hudson Shore Room upstairs. We have only woman artists. 
because it would, this was the year of the anniversary. We wanted to, to honor Linda and honor some of her colleagues. And uh, so we have a great show and then we have the residencies and, and plus, you know, a lot of programming. So there is, yeah, please, um, please become a friend of our face. Yes, definitely. It's, it's so important for contemporary art in, in not just in San Antonio, it's in the whole region, really. Yeah. I always say art is what gives us our breathing space to go ahead and take you to transport you to another place. And I will tell you this during COVID, it's so funny. I started treating my artwork like it was a museum and re staring at it and actually focusing on a different art piece every day. And it's wonderful what different things I saw in it. That even though I saw it when I first purchased it, some you don't, because you just, your eye gets used to just seeing it, right? But sitting yes. with it and just looking at it, it was interesting how certain things have come to, come alive to me in a different way. And it's beautiful to see um, from that perspective. And I will tell you this, you are collecting art. I would also recommend that you contact my friend because even if you're not in New York or in San Antonio, she has two galleries, which I'm going to ask her about in a little bit about running them during this time frame. There's always a phone and you can say, I have this wall. What can I do with it? And she and her yes. team fabulous at putting things thank together you. So, thank you no, definitely. and yes. on that note you opened a gallery in new york as well and then you have a gallery in san antonio and i love this whole texas new york connection that we have going on <laughs> here um you know the bridge because of so many of san antonio is always in new york and so much of new york is always in san antonio so i think that that's always a, a great aspect tell me how have you dealt with the, the whole COVID situation how has that worked for you or how have you reinvented well, it? Well, you know, when this, um, when this, when COVID hit in March, in uh, uh, we had, we everybody closed in New York. Right. Everything was shut down. Uh, so we we just reopened in September. Actually, mm -hmm. we we have been closed. Uh, San Antonio, we were able to reopen earlier, uh, but you know, we took, you know, we. One of the silver linings of COVID is that you have more time in your hands. Um, and before COVID hit, we were do, we were in the process of migrating all our database to a new database mm -hmm. that is feeding our website. So digitally, uh, so the whole team was able to concentrate on doing that. And the whole team is, you know, I, I had two staff, three staff, and one in, and interns. The, amazing interns. Um, and that was what, that's what kept my sanity, just doing mm -hmm. that and looking at images and updating uh, the database because uh, I, I just couldn't think about COVID. Like right. I would just get the press or whatnot. Um, so now is, uh, you know, we're open in New York, 11 to four, Wednesday to Saturday, the same time is in San Antonio. And a lot of the business is done digitally or is done by phone and is done by sending images to to collectors and, you know, mounting the show and then sending that out to our consultants, to curators, to clients. So a lot of the work is done by, you know, digitally. Um, I miss I miss a lot the openings because mm -hmm. uh, an opening is not just, you know, a party. It's, it's also it's when you all when the community comes together you come and converse and talk and exchange ideas about art is 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 something that I miss. But um, you know, I'm very hopeful. I think in the uh, by by in a hopefully it's not going to be a year. It's going to be less than a year that we will we will be able to safely congregate again. Right. So I'm looking forward to that. And I have a question. What advice would you give an you know an artist or an entrepreneur? What advice would you give to somebody during this time frame? To really go deep in what you want to do. To, to mm -hmm. really go deep in your focus or your work. Uh, to, to go deep in, in what you want to achieve. What are, what are your goals? What makes you, what to, run, to really think about was where do you see yourself in five years from now? Right. And to kind of work in that goal. Um, and I think it's, it's important that we, we have time now to, to do a lot of research. And mm -hmm. you, you can just do it from your laptop, uh, mm -hmm. from your, even from your phone, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I think it's, a, it's not everything is bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just, we just have to take 
Uh, so look at you, like you, you, you are doing all this work, all this amazing you. work. Uh, you were able to launch your business. Thank you. You have to tell me how you're doing all the work that you're doing. My goodness. I'm so I'm, impressed. Well, well, thank you, friend. I will tell you this. I, I really believe that in divine timing and divine friendships that come together like ours, but like you, I think we, I had to be okay going back to that soul searching, just like you did. And I had to ask myself, mine, I admittedly so started about two years ago thinking, what are my next steps? What are these next moves? And what would I like to do? And when I really took it, just like what you're doing with art, I want to do with entertainment and cross-section of entertainment and fashion is highlighting the great artists that we have here from those perspectives and doing a cross section of them together. But I've been able to do it because I take that soulful time to really stop and think, like you said, and rewrite my goals. And I will tell you this, a goal I had yesterday might be different tonight, you know, when I sit in my journal and, and, and also not being afraid of failure. And thank God I have my dad. My dad actually sits on my desk. He gave me a little thing to go on my desk when I opened my company. says, this girl can. He goes, I want you to remember you can do anything you put your mind to. I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. I know that you have inspired so many. Because, y lo voy a decir en español un poquito, and then I'll translate it in English. Pero todo mi orgullo, y, a, y te aprecio tanto, y te doy tanto amor, Patricia, perdón, doctora Patricia Ruiz. Ay, no, no me digas, doctora. No, 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 doctora. no, amiga. You deserve this and so much more because you Belinda. have truly gone after your dream. You embody grace and you are just elegant and just so kind and generous with your time that you are someone I hope to grow up to be because I will oh. tell you that you are amazing and I... I admire you thank so you. much, dear friend. And I learn from you in every conversation. Thank you. thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, everyone, we truly hope you enjoyed today's Happy Empowerment Hour with my beautiful friend, Dr. Patricia Ruiz Healy. Please do not forget to subscribe. And like I tell you, you never know which one of my fabulous friends you're going to meet next. So make sure to subscribe so that way you can meet somebody fabulous just like my friend Patricia. Gracias, corazón. Gracias, besitos. Bye. Bye.